But by the time this stream is over, I will have been up for probably about 20 hours, 18 hours, somewhere in there. And uh, after this stream is done, I'm immediately editing. I, I do not get to sleep after this is done. Hence this thing at one o'clock in the morning. And uh, we're going to be having so much content coming out tomorrow and election day. So please, please, please take a look at the YouTube because I've been putting out an ungodly amount of content. And please watch it. Please watch it before it's completely out of date and uh, not useful. Um, I, I recently did a segment on why Donald Trump is a fascist. It's about two hours long. I think it's really good. I uh, talked the other night with uh, GamerG, slash also known as Christina, uh, from Tricolor Analytics last night. And... Uh, it's really, really good, but it is a two hour long conversation. If you want to know exactly why I am convinced that Kamala Harris is going to win, we go over it in that conversation. The, the fundamentals, the, the, all of the numbers are lining up. I do not think that there is a snowball's hell, a snowball's chance in hell that Donald Trump wins. Let me put it that way. Okay. Um, I think that a conservative estimate of how well Kamala Harris is going to do is that she's going to get over 300 electoral votes. Um, I, I think that if, if the, it, it, I mean, frankly, if the Iowa poll, the gold standard of polls, the, the Selzer poll is in any way indicative that there is anywhere from a seven to 13 point shift from where the polling is currently indicating that Kamala Harris is. And I do think that there is some indication that that may be the case uh, coming out today from a lot of pollsters. Um, I think that there is, we, we start looking at ele electoral maps with like 400 electoral points for Harris. So it, it is, yeah, 56 state sweep. The real, the real fight is the legal and other battle afterwards. Not nah, see the thing is, the thing is, if she wins by as wide a margin as my conservative estimate is, I, I don't think SCOTUS can flip that. Like SCOTUS, I, I think would be emboldened by like another two thousand scenario where you have a two sixty nine, two sixty nine, with like Florida in the balance or Georgia in the balance or something like that. I don't think SCOTUS can overturn the election with 300 electoral votes for Harris, you know, and the popular vote. Like if that were to happen, we start, we start talking about like the military coming in, <laughs> you know, we, we start talking about the Pentagon intervening uh, because say what you want about those guys, uh, you know, the bloodthirsty fucks, but they do generally believe in the constitution. Um, yeah. So I, 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 I'm just saying all of this because I, I do want to acknowledge that there is a, a threat of legal fuckery. But I don't think it's going to get the traction unless it is a very close election. And from what I'm looking at, I don't think it's going to be close. I do think that we could see like terrorist attacks against the u.s from like far-right white supremacist groups but I, I it's not going to be like a civil war overthrowing the government type thing they, they don't have the juice for that uh, sophie bliss thank you for the five dollars canadian kicking us off on the right foot here and folks thank you very much for supporting stream I, it means the world to me um real quick i'm gonna just share a couple of the videos from the youtube channel um for you to check out if you are so inclined uh, and to share around. We've uh, got so much, we've got so much content coming out. Earlier today, I posted a three and a half hour video debunking Michael Knowles' <laughs> false histories around the Crusades. Um, so, you know, we, we've got a lot of stuff going up on the YouTube, but here is my breakdown of why Kamala Harris is gonna win. I'm um, just sharing that in chat. Go check it out. 
There we go. Uh, I'm surprised these terrorists aren't hang hanged up for treason. Well, that's not really a thing that you could do until they start doing the, the terrorism, Ooh, the you know? Ooh, salty turtle cupcake. Thank you for the $10 dono. Let's go. You put out so many videos today. I did, and it's going to also repeat tomorrow because not tomorrow we're also going to be putting up a bunch of videos uh, and also on election day. And then after election day, it's going to slow down a little bit. Jack, will Texas go them? Let me put it this way, LB. If Texas swings by anywhere from 7 to 13 points, something that is possible given what we saw in Iowa, I, I think that it's going to swing blue. Like, I, I, I like that. The, the math doesn't lie that that math, if applied to Texas, would swing it blue. And honestly, there is a there is a slim chance this cycle, even if the Iowa poll is not indicative, that Texas could go blue. Uh, Texas has been trending purple for a long time. Trump's comments about uh, Latinos have like, I mean, guys, uh, Puerto Ricans today held the second largest Kamala Harris rally of the cycle with over 50,000 uh, Puerto Ricans showing up to uh, to show solidarity against Donald Trump. Like. That. Like like Trump's comments and like the the comments about Latinos and Puerto Ricans specifically reach all Latinos. OK, that's not like this is kind of one of those things where like they br they kind of broke through a bubble where it's like there there's like some plausibility when conservatives talk about, you know, undocumented immigrants and people are like, well, I, you know, we're not like that, so we're fine. But the co but the comments about Puerto Ricans really punctured through that plausible deniability for a lot of people uh, in the Hispanic camp, you know, a lot, a lot of people. Yeah, like Dominicans waving Puerto Rican flags, uh, like Cubans uh, are are seeing that they might actually not be immune from this type of bigotry. Like it is. It is wild. Well, Gamer G, I think that if I, the Iowa poll is indicative, Texas goes blue. If it's not indicative, I give it like a 10% chance. Like, it, I don't think it's a likely outcome if the Iowa poll isn't indicative, but I do think that there is a slim chance it could. Basically, every election cycle, Texas shifts more and more blue. And given that uh, a ton of Republican uh likely voters died of covid given that there's been a surge of population since covid going to texas predominantly rich people uh educated people professionals um who tend to vote blue i i i not rich people but you know what i mean educated professionals i i do think it is i i agree with you that it's possible i i think we just disagree how likely it is but again, if that Iowa poll is indicative, uh, we're, we're looking at uh, Florida and Texas going blue. We're looking at Ohio going blue. Um, we're, we're, we're looking at a lot of wacky outcomes, really, which is what I've been telling you guys. If, if the Kamala Harris strategy is successful in peeling away another one or two percent of Donald Trump's white non-college voter base like that, we, we start seeing wacky outcomes. We start seeing wacky outcomes and combined with all of the gaffes and unforced errors Trump's campaign has been making like it, the possibility is more than in play. Hey, cyborg cat. Hello, ginger snapped. I hope you're right because I did a lot of persuasion text banking for Kamala. That was very unmoved by the rally. Yeah, I mean, again, it's a numbers game. It's one of those things where if you can shave one or two percent off of some of those key demographics, it, it makes a huge difference. Also, Sophie Bliss, thank you for gifting a tier one sub over on the YouTube. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. 
Um, someone on Discord said all their fashy neighbors took down all of their MAGA stuff outside. Yeah, I mean, like, enthusiasm for Trump is is cratering right now. I don't see that Iowa poll as a national trend. It might even be the popular vote ends up uh, tied. There is there's no I, I give that a zero percent chance of happening. I, I don't think you I don't think you get like voter enthusiasm in the Democratic Party to, you know, Obama levels and have have the popular vote tied. I, I don't see that um, at all. How am I just now finding out ice cream has egg in it? Uh, some of it does. Uh, typically, isn't custard the one that has uh, egg? Trump enthusiasm dropped 8% in one month? Damn. All right. Yeah, and if you take the margin of error into account, it's anywhere from a seven-point swing to a 13-point swing. But honestly, it, even if it's just a seven-point swing from what the mainstream polling consensus has been, that is a colossal nationwide sweep if it applies outside of Iowa. And I think it, I think it does. I think it does. I think it does. Oh, did we just start? We did, Alien 51. Is there another poll or just that one? There is such a thing as an outlier. Yeah, but the thing about the Selzer poll is that if you are someone who watches the polls religiously, that is the gold standard poll. That is, that is the poll that indicates, like, and has accurately indicated where the country is going to be voting for, like, the past 12 years um it, it, it's been a it, it is like the the poll and it's been the poll despite sometimes appearing to be the outlier poll it, it has been the most accurate uh of all the polling in the country for the last 12 years um and yes it is possible it is possible that's why i'm saying if the iowa poll is not indicative However, even if the Iowa poll isn't indicative, I do think that um, all of the fundamentals have aligned for a Kamala Harris uh, victory of, again, over 300 electoral votes. That, that's, my, that's my two cents. You can take it or leave it, but that is my, um, my, my analysis, as flawed as it may be. Um... You really trust that Ohio data, the Iowa data. Yeah. Guys, like if you know anything about electoral polling, you know, Ann Selzer is like the the polling outfit. You'd just like to see another uh, poll that could back it up anywhere. Well, here's an interesting thing. Here's an interesting thing. Boop, 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 boop. Pollster Steve Mitchell uh, revamped sample after poll from last week showed Trump up one, Rogers up two in Michigan. He now shows Harris and Slotkin up two. It seems clear, and this is a quote from the pollster himself, Steve Mitchell, it seems clear now that we are undersampling women, African Americans, and the city of Detroit. Correction, Mitchell did not resample in the new poll that shows Harris and Slotkin up too. He acknowledges Detroit women and African Americans are undersampled. Un undersampled. Every poll we conducted, including this one, was weighted exactly the same. So one of the things that uh, people have been uh, suspicious of is the weighting of the polls in this election cycle. And it seems like a lot of the polls have been weighted in, a, in such a way that it gives an impression of a 50-50 race when that might not at all be the case. 
And even with this uh, wrongly weighted polling, Harris and Slotkin are up two points in Michigan. Okay? According to a Michigan pollster. Uh, and if you accurately account for that, they're up by a lot more. <laughs> like a lot, a lot more. So what I, what I really am trying to indicate here is that and, and uh, there, there's another polling analyst, uh, Editor Menthon. I, I'm probably mispronouncing his name, but um, who wrote a pretty compelling speech, uh, not speech, uh, essay about his analysis of the polling data and how it shows that, by and large, it seems like a lot of these polling outfits are hedging their bets, trying to make the race look very close. Um, because they're afraid of being wrong. They're, they're afraid of underestimating Trump like they did in 2016. And you know what happened when they underestimated Trump in 2016 and he won? Their businesses took a hit. The, the reason everyone's like, don't trust the polling is because of how the polls have been wrong in 2016. And a lot of polling outfits were also wrong in 2020. Like, the... The issue is they're kind of on their, their last life. You know, the third time's the charm. If they get it very wrong this time, they're fucked. And so a lot of what my, my, from what I'm seeing here from other pollsters, not Ann Selzer, indicates to me that the polling is skewed in this election cycle. Um... I, I was afraid to talk about this more prior to the Iowa poll because I just didn't have as much to go on. But I think it's become very clear since that poll came out and since other pollsters are being a bit more transparent and being like, ha ha ha, oops, yep, it looks like we made some stakes. I, I think that what we're seeing is going to be a major correction. But, you know, we, there's just not a lot of time. Like, the final polls are already done. They're already coming out. And, um... Yeah, I mean, here here's more of the reasoning behind uh behind Steve Mitchell not correctly weighting these uh these polls, okay? And he attributes it to Throddy, thank you for the five gifted tier one subs. Have some of my powerful euros to buy booze. Well, thank you. I will need it for election day. Thank you so goddamn much. Um but this is this is the reasoning uh, that uh, Steve Mitchell gives. OK. He did not sample based on the demographic changes among African-Americans and women uh, because he believes he would have been accused of putting his finger on the scale and finding a way to make it look as though Harris was doing better. So a lot of uh, again, perception is everything to pollsters. If you are perceived as being unfair, you get less business. You know, your, your business takes a hit. So what I'm trying to kind of convey here is that I think that there is a growing body of evidence that shows that a lot of the American polling is, is skewed. Um, there, there's a term for this. It's called herding. And I think that, I, I, I think that what we're going to see is that you're going to see like seven to 13 point shifts. You're, you're gonna see you're gonna see some pretty significant changes, because again, the new polling that just came out for this week, the final polling from Steve Mitchell, is up three points for Harris, but it's the wrongly sampled and weighted data. So. I think that if you correctly sampled that, you might be seeing like an outcome of like seven to 13 points more for Harris. Isn't their reputation already down the toilet if Harris wins? I mean, kinda, <laughs> yeah. I, I think a lot of these pollsters were looking at each other and saying, well, other people are saying it's close, so it must be close. So I, I, I think they kind of uh, fell to a herd bias. Hello, Thistles for Eyes. Also, of Ava Ivy, thank you very much for subscribing with Prime. I appreciate it. A lot of polls in Michigan are near even. A lot of polls in a lot of places are near even. I don't think that that is the case, though. I, 
genuinely, I, I don't think that you're, I, I don't think that it's, it's being pulled correctly. Does AI use in polling factor in at all? I think that's something we'll find out largely after the fact. Hey, Tatum Riley. Thistles Fries, thank you for gifting a membership. So, like, I, I just think that a lot of the polling is deeply flawed. And I think the Ann Selzer poll, which is, again, the gold standard, is probably the accurate one in this election once again. You know, again, with a margin for error, but I think it is probably the most accurate poll we've seen in a while. And I think that if that is indicative of uh, skewed polling in other states, too, Republicans are, are dead in the water this election cycle. Vosh went over this earlier. They are literally just pulling chat GPT. If that's if that's the case, uh, some people are going to like be sued into oblivion. <laughs> Uh, Red Lion Eagle was caught pressuring a pollster to hedge the poll. I don't know who that is. It's very close right now. I think that there's some indication that it's not as close as people as people think. Fr frankly, I again, I I I think that from the Ann Selzer poll, and I'm going to keep referring to it because it's the last major data point before. And a lot of the comments coming out of like the polling community, the the, the election heads, I, I think a lot of it indicates that, oh boy, this is not going to go how Republicans think it's going to go. Yo, Sophie Bliss, thank you for the $5 Canadian for the editing hours where you don't get donos. Thank you. I appreciate it. I mean, Gamergy, it wouldn't be surprising if Trump's circle was putting pressure on their pollsters to uh, favor him so that they can present him with favorable data. Because frankly, from what we know of how Donald Trump operates in private, he, want, he wants people to flatter him. And if the data is inconvenient to that, then he takes it out on the people who bring him the data. You know, like I, I, get, I get the feeling that there is an incentive in Trump's inner circle to fabricate that data going to vote tomorrow good get out there probably missed my thing with jd vance no i i know how vice presidents work i heard that's why they keep having the music it's to calm him down i mean i don't think it's because of i let me put it this way i don't think they keep having the music to calm him down. I think he is he is ordering the music and he's fired everyone on his campaign that might tell him that's a bad idea, you know? Boop, boop, boop. Every swing state could go either way, and everyone in those seven should get as many people to vote as they can. I agree, except that, again, I, I do think the data indicates that the swing states are going to go to Kamala. Beep, beep, beep. I mean, I, I, again, if you guys want to know why, I, I encourage you all to watch the video um, that I did with Tricolor Analytics. You voted two weeks ago for Harris? Hell yeah. Proud to speak up for life-saving health care services for the women in Texas? Hell yeah, Mike C. Let's go. Did no, no, no teenager should die in Texas because they're denied abortion care. You know, 
No, no woman or person should die because they're being denied that care, you know? So f go fucking vote. <laughs> like, my God, uh, you know, I I've definitely pissed off like some Green Party voters this past week. But like, man, even if you buy their arguments uh, about Harris and, and Trump being equally bad on Gaza, there's no excuse when it comes to all of the other policy differences. Did you see Trump going with gold and black with his outfit? Uh, no, I did not. Wouldn't it be more accurate to look at aggregate polls? Well, by the, by the fucking dip, the issue is if the polls in aggregate are skewed due to a herd it, herding bias, then that means that the aggregate of the polls is skewed. You know? The, the reason I attribute uh, more rigor to the Selzer poll is because it has proven and demonstrated itself to be rigorous even in the face of herd bias in the past. Wouldn't the herding bias go both ways? No. Her herd bias in polling tends to go towards the middle. Green parties for nincompoops? True! Green smelly nincompoops. Whew. We have content to cover, folks. You heard the International Green Party Org condemning Jill Stein. Yeah, but uh, again, people, people who've already locked in to vote green uh, don't give a shit. If they had the ability to do critical thinking, they would have done it months ago. Content about what? Why, I'm glad you asked, Tatum Riley. We're going to be going over a lot of stuff. We got last minute debates to cover. We've got, we've got, uh, we've got, we've got some Donald Trump closing arguments to take a look at. Hello, KM Stas. We got stuff to do. I'm not just here to dick around. Wondering if I should put myself in a sketchy money situation, finding more people to bet on election. I'm up to fourteen hundred dollars on Harris. Yo, I don't, 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 don't put yourself in any sketchy situations. Let me put it this way: if you have to put yourself in a sketchy situation to bet, that's not a bet worth making. Don't gamble money you're not willing to lose. Sending love and mental strength to my American pals from Australia. Yennefel, we're doing our damnedest to make sure fascism doesn't take over America and ruin all of your lovely countries as well. Okay? All in on Harris. Please no. Some people thought Harris was just being rhetorical with her to-do list. This is cute. This, 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 is, this is cute. 
This is a cute little Twitter post. I like it. Cut taxes for uh, more than 100 million Americans. Pretty nice. Strengthen Medicare and protect Social Security. Nice. Work in the private sector to build 3 million new homes to increase housing supply and bring down costs. Not too keen on this private sector malarkey, but the other bits are good. Uh, pass bipartisan border security bill to strengthen and secure our border. Boo. Restore reproductive freedom. Nice. Legalize recreational marijuana. Nice. Uh, cap the cost of insulin at $35 per month and prescription drug costs at $2,000 per year for all Americans. And honestly, do you know how much medical debt this would stop Americans from falling into? Do you, like, like medications being capped at 2 k per year is, in, is wildly wonderful in America. Expand Medicare to cover home care for seniors and people with disabilities. Wonderful policy. Uh, protect and strengthen the Affordable Care Act. Nice. Promote common sense gun safety laws. Nice. Uh, invest in American manufacturing and clean energy. Nice. Expand the startup tax deduction for small businesses by 10 times to 50K. Nice. Give families a 6K tax credit during the first year of their child's life. Nice. Which would probably also reinstate the child tax credit for, you know, families, which would be very, very nice. Pass the first ever federal ban on corporate price gouging on food and groceries. Nice. And more. Wait a minute. You can't check that off. That's not how a checklist works. You can't just say and more and then have a checkbox next to it. That could mean anything. That could mean like take a shit. Check it off. Check it off the list. Anyway, it's cute. It's cute. It's a cute post. <laughs>